Jared Halpern from Fox News Radio. Jared, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. You know, I, I, I listened to an interview with one of the attorneys for this border guard, and I'm going to play that real quick, if you don't mind, just so my listeners can hear what he had to say about this situation. Mr. Mesa's position about what happened that day as he was executing his duties and he's a United States Border Patrol agent responding to a camera operator who indicated that aliens were entering into the country. He responded, he apprehended one and began, and other aliens began assaulting him with rocks, which are deadly weapons and which could have placed him in serious bodily injury. So the, I, th- that's the position, clearly, of the attorney for the border guard in this situation. Well, what's at stake here? What happened in the lower courts, Jared? So the, the, the competing, the, there are two different sort of versions, right? You have the, the, the border agent's version, which you just heard. The family's version, the, the teenager's family's version, is much different. Uh, neither of those versions, by the way, matter for the U.S. Supreme Court. That is okay. not what the Supreme Court is considering uh, in arguments that they heard today, that the bigger issue is whether or not this lawsuit uh, is able to move forward at all. That is a question to your to your question that federal judges up to this point have been split on. Um, you had the Fifth Circuit Court, um, a panel on the Fifth Circuit Court. Um, I may have the order wrong. Well, a panel on the Fifth Circuit Court made one ruling that the lawsuit could go forward. A in bonk, sort of all of the judges then uh, flipped that. That's why okay. it's at the Supreme Court. Okay. Um, so federal judges have been have been split. The question is not so much which version of events is true. Those are things that are litigated through the lawsuit, right, um, or through criminal trials, but that, that's not going to happen. So the question is, uh, is there a claim, and the claim that the family's trying to make is a Fourth Amendment claim, which uh, there's a, a clause in the Fourth Amendment that has been uh, large, that it is considered to be a, a prohibition on on unjustified deadly force, right? That is something that um, is sort of part of the, the Fourth Amendment law. The question is, does that apply in a case where you have a Mexican citizen, a non-U.S. citizen, um, who, as you point out, died uh, on Mexican soil? Uh, now, the Mexican government is backing the family, and they have said this area actually is controlled by the U.S. government. Uh, that it is this culvert area, this sort of fenced-in area, uh, that is controlled uh, by the U.S. And that is why uh, there's a culpability issue here and why this, uh, this trial, uh, this lawsuit, ought to go forward. The, the claim on the um, U.S. side is that that is not true at all. This is a, a foreigner who was killed in a foreign country and that there is no uh, constitutional claim here. That is what the Supreme Court has to figure out, and it sounds like a very specific case except you look at now some of the uh, counterterrorism uh, issues that the U.S. is engaged in, the drone program, um, and whether or not if this case were to be able to go forward, what would that mean in the broader sense in some of these cases now where uh, you may have civilian casualties in a U.S. operation overseas? Yeah, good point. Were the, were the drone operators sitting in a trailer somewhere in the United States operating a Correct. drone overseas, right? So, th- so what the, what the other uh, uh, interview I heard from this attorney for the border guard said was the real question here is where does the Constitution end? Does it That's end correct. at the border? Yeah. What side of the border? Yeah. Or, or does it end where, where the, as far as the bullet can fly once it's fired right. across the border? You're absolutely right. Yeah. Does it because the, the shot that the trigger was pulled, if you will, in U.S. soil, and ended up uh, on foreign soil? That that and these are complicated questions. And really, if you think about it, it's such like I said a, a sort of specific case, but it could have wider uh, ramifications. One thing that the family's attorney has pointed to in their briefs is that listen, uh, we have allowed lawsuits in this country to go forward, for instance, from inmates at Guantanamo. Right. which is not U.S. soil, but it is U.S. controlled. And again, their claim is this is an area, uh, the border area, that is controlled by the U.S. government. So again, it's not an issue of whether or not the border guard acted correctly or incorrectly. Mm-hmm. It's sort of before that, right? Can we even have that that litigated in this in in this uh, civil suit? Yeah, I listened to the attorney who clearly is being paid maybe by the country of Mexico or by the parent of these kids, he seemed to explain something as well that, that for all I know, could end up having a, an impact on Donald Trump's new immigration uh, uh, ban or temporary travel ban that he's trying to put in place because there have been questions there about how far d- do certain clauses in the U.S. Constitution go to protect people who aren't in this country yet. Right. 
I don't know if there's an application here. Hammered out within that. Now I don't yeah. know how how much these are going to connect. We should point out that this this incident, this shooting happened in 2010. Right. Um, so the last administration. A long um, time. A long time. So ago. this is not this is not specifically a Donald Trump issue. But no. I understand the connection. Like I said, the the interesting thing that I find about Supreme Court cases is you often get these very specific instances. Uh, where the question before the court is far more broad than that mm-hmm. and could cover a lot more ground in, in many other similar, uh, though not the same, situations. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. Jared Halpern, thanks for explaining that so well. I appreciate it. Sure thing. Yep, you take care of yourself. Uh, Jared Halpern from Fox News Radio covering this story on the steps of the United States Supreme Court today where they're going to hear this case. It's complicated. It, it really is. Now, you know, my position would be, uh, the guy was standing in Mexico throwing rocks at uh, a border guard who was trying to do his job. So, like Jared said, the question is not right or wrong. Did he have a right to defend himself? The question is, a con- did, did, the, did the kid across the border, was he covered by our Constitution at the point this happened? And I think the answer is clearly no. It's got to stop somewhere. I don't know. Um, I, I guess what his point was, you wouldn't go to Mexico and expect – to be covered by the Mexican Constitution, you know? So we will let you know. We'll we'll follow that case. Clearly, you know how these things go. Sometimes they hear these arguments in February, and it's May or June before you get a decision. So hopefully uh, before too awful long. Sean Spence.